I am Jolene Cheng. Welcome to Women Who Go For It. It's a video series designed to empower and motivate women to step up and take action to lead happier lives. I interview intelligent, dynamic women. We look at their influences, their best practices, what they've learned along the way, and how they operate. When you watch these videos, look for one idea that you can use. You can test it for the next two weeks so you can elevate your level of happiness. Today's guest is Gina Carr. If you want to build your support group, your mastermind group, your community, if you have a cause you want people to fight for, if you want to help each other, Gina is your gal. She is a tribe builder. Over the last 10 years, I've been able to see her in action and be part of her tribe. And it's, it's motivating to see how she can nurture and build and get people motivated to help each other. Um, awesome. She's also the co-author of Clout Matters. She and her partner, Terry Brock, who I'm sure we'll hear from at some point, uh, wrote Clout Matters. And Clout is your online influence. And if I have a question on social media, uh, I will message uh, probably on Facebook. Hey, Gina, do you know how to do that thing? Have you heard of that? The video thing? <laughs> um, and, and so she's a great resource and very connected. And Terry as well. If I have a gadget question, I'll probably talk to him. So they're they're very high tech, um, fun couple that we will talk to more. Uh, regarding successful people, in this interview, we're going to look at success habits. I think it's all about the daily routine. And um, I, I glean a lot of things from what she said on how to get her routine down and how to stay disciplined. So um, I think you'll find some value, great value in it. Gina Carr. You're prolific with all the social media and that's why I follow you and that's why I'm always in your classes. Were there signs of this, of you building tribes like out on the playground and like, hey, let's gather up or hey, I'm gonna have a party or let's include everybody. Were there signs of that as a kid? You know, I, I guess there were actually, and um, I, I remember back being in, uh, you know, like a speaker would come in, and all a the speaker kids, really a speaker would come in <laughs> to the class, yeah. and then the kids would all say, "Gina, ask this question." Gina, ask this question. I'm like, why are you looking at me to ask this question? So, tribe building is about leadership, of course, leadership, and and so you know you've got to have a vision for where you want to take your tribe, what it is you're wanting to accomplish in the world, and then I say, well, you, it's an old African proverb that if you want to go fast, go alone; if you want to go far, go together. And I say, if you want to go faster further, faster, build a tribe. <laughs> yeah, I say it all the time, right? <laughs> but you did not know that when you were six. Right, but, but you know, I was um, elected into leadership positions from an early age, and so I started building my own tribes. And um, well, give us give us an came, example. Like, was it on the playground? Were you? Um, what does it look like? Because I'm probably one of the earliest was 4-H club. Yeah, and I was elected as president or vice president of something, and then the next year, you know, junior band, the president of that, and so. Um, a tribe builder generally has an organization that they either have stepped forward to lead themselves just on their own, which often happens, or often they're uh, elected into a position. What did you get from that? Because I'm thinking about that classroom and then 4-H with the horses and whatever it was. Um, what did you, why did you feel the duty or did you feel like, oh, I must represent or I just love this or what was the feeling? Like I, I guess you? from the beginning it was just uh, an honor to be elected. Yeah. You know, it was nice yeah. that my peers thought enough of me to, to do that. And then, um, you know, over the years I just, it just seemed like when I would join an organization, if I was excited about the organization, within a year or two I was the president of it. It's just a kind of a interesting cycle that would happen. And, you know, if I set my sights on it or if it, I just got real involved with it, um, I would usually be either nominated or often elected into, you know, a student body. I, I wasn't student body president. I was student, um, I was class president of my high school classes. And then I was the water ski club president and the national, uh, the, the big honor society, national honor society in high school and the big honor society at my college, Omar Khan Delta Kappa. So just a lot of different roles like that. What would people say your three top qualities are and those qualities that led you to be the leader starting from a young age? Hmm. I guess one would be that I'm outspoken. Often if I feel something, I'm going to say something, even if it's not in what other people think should be said. So I, I do stand up for 
unpopular opinions mm -hmm. and often the underdog. So I, I think that would be one thing. So um, what else? Um, I'm probably accessible. You know, I talk to anybody. I love people, and so I'm naturally curious about people. Yeah. So I want to find out about them, and I guess that that sort of endears them back to me. And then what would number three be? Oh, I don't know. Um, I, I like seeing change in the world. I like seeing things done better. And so that constant, I think it's a, a, a Tony Robbins thing, can, can I, constant never-ending improvement. I'm often striving to see things get better either in the organization that I'm working with or in my own personal life, or, you know, whatever it is, I, I like to work towards improvement. Let's go with that in terms of constant improvement. I am ambitious <laughs> and I want things to happen now. I want 15 pull-ups now. No, I just wanted eight and I got it. But how do you manage your, um, if you have this ambitious goal, how do you get there to, to keep yourself going even though if you can't get there, get there as fast as you want? You know, it's, it's <laughs> harder today than ever. You know, we live in a world where there's so much information, there's so much resources, there's so many people to help you, um, but it's still a challenge to, to make improvements. I think the big thing is that you need to decide what it is you want and then put in implementable steps, you know, break it down into bite-sized chunks. Uh, for example, I wanted to lose weight last year. I had really, uh, my weight had soared and so I needed to lose some weight. And I just um, said, okay, what is it I need to do? And everybody says, oh, you need to exercise more and lose weight and, and eat less. Well, it didn't, it wasn't that simple. I mean, there were several years of trying one thing and trying another thing and it just didn't work. And so, but finally I did land on something that worked really well for me, a juicing program, mm -hmm. Juice Fast. Many of your listeners might have tried something like this. Reboot with Joe, a guy named Joe Cross, who's Australian, made this really popular with a movie called Fat, Sick and Nearly Dead. And so he uh, popularized this, this concept of juicing and I did that and so that was just a day by day. I got the book, I followed the recommendations and you know, I believe in really following what the leader says, what the coach says as much as possible in the beginning. So I'll try to, I guess the simplest answer to your question of how do I get ahead yeah. is I will try to find somebody who's done it before yes. and who can lead me down a path and yes, I'm gonna add my own style or innovation to it, but I want a path and I want to say, okay, chances are good that if I follow this path, I'm gonna be successful. I think that's a really good thing to do. How do you stay accountable and what if you really feel like that donut as I did the other day and the day before and some <laughs> ice cream and how do you stay accountable and, and tell yourself when you're feeling like, oh, I really want something else? I, it's almost like I have a switch. I, I won't say I'm real disciplined, but in some things I'll say, I'm going to do this for 10 days, 15 days. I ended up there doing the first one for 30 days, but in the beginning I said, I'm going to do this for 10 days. I did it for 10 days. I loved it. I said, okay, I'm going to go for 15. I'm going to go for 30. And, you know, at the end of 30 days, I'd lost 20 pounds, which, which was, you know, I was pretty happy with that. And, um, and so that's one way. Another way is I have a lot of Facebook groups. Yes. And so I did start later a Facebook juicing support group. And so for any of your listeners who are interested, yeah. if they friend me on Facebook, facebook.com slash Gina Carr, G-I-N-A-C-A-R-R, -R, and say, you want to join the juicing group, I'll try to get you in there. So it's just a loose group. Uh, it's not structured. It's, it's no cost, but it's just people who are trying to eat healthier and want to have questions about juicing. And the, the idea is, hey, post some ideas and um, get an inspiration from others, and if other if others are watching, boy, I better be on it. Or how does that support? Yeah, you? I think that's part of it. Is especially if you position yourself as, as yeah. the leader of the group, then you know you need to be um, in there, active in the group. And yeah, it's probably a little tougher to share my own challenges, but I do. I, I'll share some challenges. You know, like oh, I'm really wanting a lot of nuts or guacamole, or you know, during the actual juice yeah. fast part, I'll. Uh, those things are healthy things to eat, yeah. and I've gone vegan now, so those are certainly vegan, but I'll try to back off that a little bit if I'm trying to lose a few pounds. I think one of the messages is I'm doing several, I'm going to do 30-day challenges for many, for the, at least the next year. And I think the idea is there's an end point, you're saying 10 days, 15 days. Yes. If you just make it through, then you can benchmark that, and that's, I think that's key. By the way, that is key. I think that's key. <laughs> Let's talk about other discipline. Um, with your social media, how do you manage that so it doesn't take 
24 hours of your day. Boy, it sure can. I, you know, I go in there and I'm planning just to, to check something and, and then the next thing I know is 30 minutes later, it's an hour later. So it's hard. It's yeah. really hard. Um, I, I have a little timer. It's, it's like one of the little timers that you can buy at a Bed yep. Bath & Beyond yep. or something, and uh, most people use it for cooking, but mm -hmm. I will set the timer. I'll say, okay, I'm only going to be here for 20 minutes. Yes. And so I'll set it, and I'll watch it click down. And so it's like if I haven't done this task, you know, my own post or my own input to the groups or whatever it is that I need to do, I've got to stay on track for that. So I find that those little timers are incredibly helpful and to help me focus on something for a short period of time. I use that in social media. I use that on other projects also. Um, you know, when I'm having a lot of trouble writing an article or uh, just getting something done on a project, I'll set 20 minutes. I'm like, okay, surely I can focus for 20 minutes and not do anything else and, and try to get that done. Yes, I have the timer, but without a consequence or incentive, sometimes the timer doesn't, it's not as helpful. Do you use, do you use any consequences or incentives or accountability on Facebook or? Oh, not, not much. Uh, I don't use accountability on Facebook right now. Um, maybe I'll say, okay, after I've done this, then I'll go get my, you know, juice. Uh, don't go get your juice because, okay. because especially yeah. when you work on your own, yeah. it's easy just to get up and go walk and go do something. Um, I'll do a little bit of rewards if there's something big that I wanted to accomplish, but, but generally no. I just the timer is enough for me to impose some level of discipline and focus. Back to tribe building. Before social media was big, what were you doing? In tribes? Well, you know, there's always been leaders of different organizations. So in my alumni association, Georgia Tech, uh, I went to Georgia Tech undergraduate. So I uh, was president of the Georgia Tech Buckhead Club, which is a suburb of, of Atlanta. And then I was active in the Harvard Business School Club. That's where I went for graduate school. So I was active in that club. and. Um, you know, membership chairman. I'm usually membership chairman or vice president of programs or something like that. So I, I just love getting people together. I love the energy that I get from different people. I love the ideas that come up. I love learning from people. So that's that's some of the things that I did. So with your business now and building tribes, what's um, what are you trying? What's your end goal? Let's say for the end of the year in terms of building your tribes, because I know you have lots of projects. Well, a big project right now is we rolled out a course, uh, my partner and I, uh, mm -hmm. he's my life and business partner, Terry Bruck, and you know him well. Yeah. And we rolled out a course called Build Your Business, Achieving Success, Achieve Success with Social Media and Relationship Marketing. And we're really excited about it. A lot of people have signed on and they're learning. Uh, we broke it down into bite-sized steps about Facebook and Twitter and online communities, these support groups that I'm talking about. Uh, so that's pretty exciting and um, you know I'd love to share that with people. So that's that's one of the things. I I, I think I'm gonna get my tribe building academy together. Uh, all right, oh, so here's oh, accountability. There you go. There you <laughs> go. All right, I will do a public accountability. It's been on my bucket list for a while. Tribe building academy, I've had the URL. I think it's time for me to really roll that out and just start some training on my own because I've been the dean of some other academies, mm -hmm. uh, other universities that are online, but they weren't mine. Right. I need to do mine. Yeah, you heard it here. Okay, you heard it here. <laughs> uh, what would you, I know, back to support, what kinds of, do you do masterminding, coaching, mentoring? How do you get feedback when you need feedback outside of your partner? Yes, often I'll have a, um, um, an accountability partner mm -hmm. and I find that very helpful. And sometimes it'll be somebody that I talk to once a week, sometimes once a day when I'm really trying to make some progress. Um, but that's a, that's a hard thing to find somebody who will actually do that with you and who's committed and you, you gotta stay on track and you know give each other gentle encouragement and such. Um, so I have that going most of the time and right now I have a, a loose one. We, we, we've committed to each other, but we're just not on track. She's traveling, I'm traveling, we're at conferences. So starting August 1st, we're gonna really get that rolling again. So we have a couple of things here. <laughs> August 1st <laughs> and your academy, okay. okay. Yes, the accountability. Um, I have, a, again, a loose mastermind. Yeah. It's not a formal one that, that mm -hmm. some people would think of, but we do get together and we do support each other and we'll share things through email threads or our Facebook group and then we get together physically often um, so that's really helpful I, I I encourage everybody to get a mastermind group if you don't have one start one and just bring in people that you think can complement and help each other it's key to success thinking back 
go back to your high school graduation, what would you tell yourself? What, what advice would you give yourself? Wow. I think something along the lines of really follow your passion and stay true to what it is that you love and that you're excited about. Uh, back, the, you know, today more than back then, you truly can make a good living at whatever you're passionate about. I mean, I've seen people who are hypnotherapists and, and fitness trainers and, you know, uh, just like exercise class trainers that have learned how to put their information on the internet. You know, that, let's say that they're really good at teaching. Uh, I take a P90X class and insanity. And uh, let's say they're really good at teaching some sort of an exercise class and they've crafted and developed yeah. their own methodology. Well, you can literally put that on uh, the internet. You can sell it. You can, make a, you can make a ton of good money doing what you really love. Musicians, you know, it's, in some ways it's harder for musicians to make money now, but in many ways it's easier. I mean, they have their own TV channel through YouTube. They have their own radio network through podcasting. Uh, they have their own t newspapers through blogging. So you can really get the word out to your focused audience, monetize it, and make a very good living at whatever you're passionate about. Oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say you were tasked with a uh, problem you knew nothing about. How do you go about, and this is kind of a broad question, but what's your process? For me, um, I was doing a lot of housework and like trying to change the P-trap and like change, hang a door with that has handle that has no screws. And so I'm, I'm out at YouTube. That's my first thing. When you have a challenge of whatever it is, what's your process? Certainly internet search, uh, Google search. I definitely go to Google and type in whatever it is I'm interested in and just dig through that. That's definitely one of the main ways that I'll do it. Um, if I know someone who mm -hmm. has done something in that field, I would I would research, reach out to them. Like, you know, I'm so impressed with your little setup here. You guys can't see it, but she's got this really cool setup here with the camera and, and um, what do you call this? Uh, <laughs> well, it's actually on a mic stand. Yeah, so a mic a stand and, and, and some cool stuff. So if I were going to do this, which I probably will, I'm going to reach out to you and say, hey, how do you do that? Good. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> So, Gina, you are very outgoing. What's something that people think is odd, but you do it anyway? Well, this is fairly <laughs> well, new in my... No hesitation. <laughs> She's like, oh, yeah, I'm told that all the time. Well, I, no, I'm not told that all the time, yeah. but, but this is something that I've adopted recently, and I am getting some pushback in the yeah. world from it. A little bit, not much, but I've gone vegan. Yeah. Uh, I've become a vegan, and uh, that was uh, sparked through the juicing that yeah. I did, and that the juicing is all fruits and vegetables, through a juicer for no the meat 30 juice days. And shrimp <laughs> juice. Yeah. No, no, not at all. <laughs> and um, I felt great. I had wonderful energy. I, I just loved it. And then I started doing research and, and I saw uh, T. Colin Campbell speak. He's, um, he wrote this book called The China Study. And in it, he talks about how there's de definitely reason to believe that there's a high correlation between animal protein, including milk, including uh, eggs, and the, the diseases of the Western world, cancer, um, heart disease, diabetes, obesity, all of these things that, that we're experiencing, we're like, duh, why? Well, because every time you eat, every time we're conditioned that you've got to have meat with this. You know, you go to um, Hardee's for your bre breakfast, where you've got to have a, an, either a sausage biscuit or a chicken biscuit or something. You've got to have meat. And so we're, we're slaughtering all these animals, which that's always bothered me. But I thought it was not healthy to go vegan. So I wanted to go vegan for the ethical reasons, which yeah. is what I have done. But now that I know, and I really believe in my heart, that there's so many health problems that are mm -hmm. uh, improved, including on, personally things that I've experienced, um, that I, I really feel good about it now. And I'm kind of evangelical about it a little bit, to tell <laughs> well, you the what truth. I, what I've heard <laughs> is that vegans start all crazy and like then they simmer down. Yeah. And then they're a little bit less preachy, judgy, and then it's all... Yeah. yeah, I know. I, yeah, I don't think I'm exactly judgy, but I'm, I'm just looking well, at the world through yeah. totally new right. eyes, and and I am sharing a little bit, probably too much, about on Facebook <laughs> yeah. about it. You know, I'm using the hashtag. It's easy to be vegan. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Because people think it's hard, but it, yeah. it it's really not. I'm from Seattle, and and I'm I know vegans now. I bet you do. And I do. And I, this is totally not interesting, maybe to anybody. But Dina, <laughs> <laughs> um, I post all these fun things I'm making out of vegetables because I'm learning and if you can make them tasty then I'm great then I'm excited my friend was like oh yeah I'll make you some dinner he looked at all my feet he's like oh 
<laughs> he was gonna make like this steak, this wonderful meal, but he was like, "Oh, I bought I bought a bunch of vegetables." I'm like, "I'm not a I'm a carnivore," <laughs> because of my posts, anyways. Well, you know, I hope your audience does take this seriously. I, you know, I just didn't take nutrition seriously as mm -hmm. as a young person. You know, this it was the people who weren't serious students who took home ec and who learned about nutrition and those sorts of things. And so, but I'm really passionate about it now. Yeah. I've really been digging in and learning and you know, well, why am I having this physical problem and why am I, uh, I've had some terrible menopausal things, you mm -hmm. know, that have, uh, that have affected me over the last few years. And so I've been learning how to deal with those through nutrition. Yeah. You know, we're taught, oh, go take a pill, take a pill, take a pill. Yeah. Well, nutrition really can cure so yeah. many things. So, and it's important for you ladies in energy you, you know, you've got, I say you've got to eat for energy. I mean, I would have, I, I realized I'm black, allergic to sugar. And so, you know, I'd go to lunch and everything has sugar in it. Salad dressings, all these things. Have, yeah. I'd be asleep by 2 or 3 p.m. And, and, you know, like, well, what's wrong with me? Oh, I'm just tired. No, I've realized that I can increase my energy. And that's really key for success and getting a lot done. Okay, did you see my chocolate? Oh, the, right there. <laughs> <laughs> it works for some people. Yeah. It doesn't work for me. And it took right, me a right. long time, 50 plus years to figure it out. But now you got it. Bam. Yeah. Uh, what is your, I know you're so busy. What is your schedule? How do you start your day and how do you close your day? Well, on, on my ideal days, which yes. um, I, I Let's get talk up. talk about those. Yeah, I actually get up at four most every day. Yes. Uh, because I go to a 515 a.m. exercise class. And I love my friends in Central Florida. If you're watching this, uh, my, my YMCA friends from P90X and, uh, and Insanity class, um, it's really great. It's just, it's so energizing. Again, just getting those people together. I yeah. mean, I could do yeah. that at home on yeah. my own, but the people together, I, I push myself more and I feel better and I get my, you know, people fix. And then actually that group actually does stay after a little bit generally and we have a little chat uh, after the class. So, yeah. so I, I, I really enjoy that because when you work at home alone, yeah. for the most part, you know, if you don't get out a little bit. Yeah, the, the, you, I go batty. Yeah, I, yeah. I go batty too, and yeah. I don't like it. So I love this. So it's a great way to start my day. So get up, uh, typically I'll, I'll do a little reading uh, in the mornings. Um, it's important to read, and I'll try to actually read a book, you know, instead of just blog mm -hmm. posts and such. Um, or if I'm working on a course, which I'm often doing, I'll try to get in, you know, one segment of, of the course before I go to my class. So then I go to the class, come back, um, I live in Florida and I actually try to get a little bit of vitamin D each day because that's really important. Yeah. And so the best way to get vitamin D is out in the sun. So I will do a quick, um, about a 20 minute meditation slash vitamin D. I won't call it sunbathing because my father died of skin cancer. So I, I no longer sunbathe, yes. but you know, if it's eight in the morning, I'm not getting you know, yeah. harsh sun, but I'll, I'll get a little bit of vitamin D. So that helps me too. With the meditation, I'm trying to do that more and more. I really struggle with that but I, I've learned that that is key to good health and to clearing your mind and being able to get your mind focused. Do you meditate? Not yet. <laughs> Music. <laughs> Music and chocolate. However, I did do the post, and I, I'm one of those who post a lot, and I posted a couple times, hey, I sat on my deck for a half an hour and I was not listening or watching uh, a book about you know Tim, Timothy Ferris or something, and then I was, I was computer, Mostly, except for my phone was right there. Yeah, yeah. So that's the closest that I okay. come. Okay. What would you have? What could you say to me about meditation? Like, because we're we're busy, we're multitasking, trying to get things done. What do you tell me about meditation? Like, <clears throat> how to how to think about it? Because you know me, and how do I? I, I am definitely not an expert in this area. It's something I'm working on and yeah. struggling with. I did find a couple of apps that have helped me. One is called Headspace, and it's a free app that leads you on 10 guided lessons and sort of introduces you to it. And this guy has this really sexy voice. I don't know, he's Australian or something. And, you know, so, and he's leading you on this uh, meditation. And, and I love that. That helped me a lot. Yeah. And then I found, uh, there's another app. Uh, I, I, uh, we'll put it in the notes yeah. as far as the actual name sure. of it. But it's a binaural um, thing. And so it'll have like um, a, a flowing brook sound over some sort of a meditation thing. And, and you can key it for meditation, for um, clearing your head, for focus, for relaxation, all these different types of, of, and I don't know how it works, but I do believe that it gets into yeah. your head and, yeah. and it helps you to streamline. So those things have helped me tremendously because I do not do this well naturally either. <laughs> it sounds like it's Yeah, no, I'm just, too. I'm thinking about that. And, and 
And because all successful do meditate of some sort. Well, I do. Then I, I should. Um, the other question I had was, oh, so then you have the bulk of your day. How do you end your work day, and then how do you end your full day? Okay, around five or six, um, ideally, I would get out and take a, a walk. Mm -hmm. In addition to the morning exercise, yeah. if I'm getting out and take a walk, especially because what I do is so sedentary, I really sit, yeah. and sit a lot during the day. So if I can get out and take a walk, that's good. And then um, I usually will create juices or some sort of a you know veggie dinner, salad, or I, I don't I don't cook cook a lot because I believe that the more raw the food is, the healthier it is. Mm -hmm. That's other learning that I've done. Uh, but I'll you know do a light saute on something, some stir fry vegetables, something like that. And then I have a date every night with my sweetheart Terry. Every We've been together five years, and honestly, every single day he comes in and says, may I have a date with you tonight? Oh. Can you believe that? <laughs> he is just the sweetest, best boyfriend in the world. And so he will say, you know, may I have a date with you tonight? And so we have a date, and usually we get together um, at 8, and we just, we literally do, you know, how was your day? How was your day? And this is after even the business day. We've had a lot of meetings yeah. together, right. usually, yeah. anyway, because yeah. we're working on a lot of projects together. But, you know, what was the highlight of your day? What was not? And so, you know, it really means so much to me that he does ask me that. Yeah. And, and I get to ask him. Yeah. And we get to share our thoughts and ideas. And then we'll, we don't have TV, but we do have this giant screen, I don't know, 15, 20 but uh, and we have it hooked up through the computer. I don't know. He's a tech oh, genius, yeah. so he projector. yes through the projector. Mm -hmm. And so we will watch um, YouTube videos, Bloomberg, Wall Street Journal, some things like that. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it's a little more entertaining, but uh, often we're still kind of learning. We both love learning, and we yeah. love watching yeah. some history things. There's some great shows on the History Channel. One's uh, called Turn, and the other one's Sons of Liberty. If you're really into the American Revolution and learning about history in a fun and, and entertaining way, I encourage people to listen to those. And then before you go to bed, do you do any kind of wrap up of or intentions or any kind of routine like a for yourself? No, I really, really don't. Um, I I aspire to do more journaling, and mm -hmm. I would do that more in the mornings probably. Yeah. Uh, I need to work that back into my day. I've kind of dropped off of doing that, but but that has been a successful thing. Um, at night, no, do, do we just uh, watch. A couple of videos, watch videos for about an hour, yeah. and then we'll go to sleep because we've got to get up pretty yeah. early. Yeah, four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. I mean, where do you go for creativity? We're constantly getting these projects done, but to get new ideas and to get your creativity, where do you go? How do you generate that? One of the things I do, uh, and I'm really passionate about, is listening to podcasts. Yes. I love podcasts, and I listen to business podcasts, I listen to nutrition podcasts, I listen to. Um, some things that are educational. I really enjoy the podcast. And so, uh, you know, when I'm doing my afternoon walks or when mm -hmm. I'm doing, going around the house doing uh, my juicing or things like that, absolutely. I'll listen to podcasts. So I absolutely love that. And that's, that's just one of my favorite things. So I get, I get a lot of great ideas. One of the bad things is I'm out walking, and so what do you do? So then I have the phone and I make yeah. a few notes or something like that. But um, and sometimes I'll come back and, you know, uh, when I get back on the computer, I'll pull that one up and look at the show notes kind of thing. So nice. I love that. We're the same in that. Yes. My ears. <laughs> yes. So much information. In terms of, um, let's see, what was I just going to ask you? Oh, what do you want more of and less of in your life? Wow. Well, I want more money. I want more money so that I can help more people. You know, <clears throat> different people in my life um, yeah. have needs. Different family members have, have things. And there's some things that if I had more money, I'd really like to be able to say, you know. When you have more money. <clears throat> when I have more money, yes, yeah. exactly. When I have more money, I want to be able to, to help more people in my family. I want to be able to contribute more to the causes that are important to me. There are a lot of causes. Um, homeless animals, now farm animals, um, <clears throat> mental illness, suicide prevention. There, there are a lot of things that I'm pretty passionate about. And I actually lost a son to suicide. And so I'm very passionate about that. And um, there are many things that if I had more resources, I could bring more things to life that are on my bucket list that I want to, to help in the world. So in terms of your bucket list, you named one already. What's next on your bucket list? Well, another thing's on my bucket list that I'm really excited, I think it's going to happen this year, is um, scuba to scuba dive the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. 
Now, I've been scuba diving for many years, since my 20s, I guess, and uh, I, I had a lull in the past few years because I've been focused on some other things, but it looks like this year I'll be going to Australia in November and I will get to dive the very reef, so I'm very excited about and that. And you can share your pictures under with your underwater camera with the sharks because that's not something <laughs> that I am looking forward to doing. Yeah, now this one has literally been on, you know, I didn't have a, I didn't have a bucket list back mm -hmm. in my 20s. I don't think yeah. that movie was quite out yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I had it on gold list, and, yeah. and I know that that was one of the, you know, the ones that was high on the list, so I'm very excited about that. Where can we find all of your properties, or is it about me where we can see that? Woo, Gina Carr. The best place to go would be ginacar.com. Yes, yes. G-I-N-A-C-A-R-R.com. Come on over there and you can find all my social media links there. You can opt in for whatever juicy offer I have right now. Right now, my offer is for two free chapters of my book. Uh, but soon, and with, we'll have and some- And this book though. Oh yes, the book is called Clout Matters. Yeah. K-L-O-U-T, Clout Matters, Clout with a K. Uh, how to, uh, gosh, uh, how to boost your digital influence mm -hmm. and engage your customers and raise your clout score for success. And so it's all about really how to be successful in social media and it's measured by this system called clout which is the book that terry and i wrote so uh, you can get two free chapters of that and then uh, very soon you'll be able to opt into something about the uh, business build your business course and the tribe building academy yes there you go yeah i've been hovering at 62 forever on cloud i'm just like really come on <laughs> with my pull-ups i just got like 50 likes and 30 comments, come on. Anyway. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, thank you, Gina. <laughs> well, thank you, Jolene. Hey, if you guys want to get your goals on track, get an interview with Jolene and get her to ask you these questions and you'll make it public and then you'll have to do it. A cannibal, <laughs> baby. <laughs>